This video is going to show you how to clean a Comet 40 series torque converter, the drive and driven unit. The drive is on the right and the driven is on the left. Uh, there are a couple stages here. We'll start with prep. You want to go ahead and use a PB blaster or a penetrating lubricant to spray on the drive and driven unit on these locations. This will allow it to penetrate and allow for easy disassembly. For the drive unit, you want to put it on a, on a vise right there where I was showing you. It's inch and three quarter. Um, diameter and use a pipe wrench and open it if you think kind of like a pickle jar. So I made my own little tool here if it's a little more difficult to undo it. Um, I put a one inch keyed axle on a on a rod here and it allows me to have a lot more leverage and pop it off irregardless of how long it's been sitting there or how long it's been resting. It is a little spring loaded so uh, it might pop off there just be aware of that. And then as you're looking at this you're probably thinking oh my gosh at least my torque converter is not this bad. So at a bare minimum, this will give you some hope. This torque converter can be saved. This is the torque converter after it's clean. So you take off the roller weights and springs, you pop out this little brass bushing from the hub, and you spray some penetrating lubricant on here on the roller weights. Uh, take it all apart. That's what you're looking at. For cleaning, I used a brass brush on those roller weights and dish soap on the springs and um, brass bushings. For the bore, I'm just using the same brass brush to remove the rest there. For other areas, I'm using wire or fine wire attachments for the angle grinder, dremel, and drill. It's very important to remove the rust, if any, uh, from your movable sheaves. Uh, the belt will wear prematurely and fray if you don't. Uh, after you do that, you want to go ahead and remove rust um, or any buildup from the tracks in, in which the rollers or the roller weights uh, slide in and out. Um, after that, this other part of the drive unit is the hub. And that slides in and out as the gear ratios change, so you want to go ahead and remove rust from that as well. So you're not done yet. Uh, you got to polish. You know, you don't have to, but polishing will allow, especially if you've had a lot of rust on your movable sheaths, that will allow uh, an even smoother surface. So it's hard to believe, but check it out. That is the torque converter that I just cleaned. For dry lubrication, this is very important. You have to lubricate. You don't want to use grease or anything like that. WD-40. Uh, dry lubrication will uh, prevent dirt and uh, other contaminants from entering the torque converter and gumming it up. Uh, you can use dry graphite or, or dry moly or dry molybdenum. I'm using this plate here to prevent it from getting on the movable sheave because you don't have lubricant where the belt's going to ride. Uh, this other area here, um, the roller weights, I spray them just for the heck of it. I'm not sure if you have to. And I put a little anti-seize on the stud uh, for reassembly just in case you ever need to take it apart again. So for reassembly, um, Opposite of disassembly, you know, you put it all back together. The roller weights, they're all the same. All the springs are all the same, so you can mix and match. Um, it doesn't matter where they go as long as you get three of them hooked up on there. Uh, one thing to remember, the brass uh, bushings here, there's one that goes on each end of the spring. Some of them ride inside of the, the stud, so you might have a little more, but there's at least one on each spring. Uh, match up the tracks, put it together, put the other brass bushing on there. Um, and reassemble the two movable sheaves. Uh, like, like I said before, it's like a pickle jar. Put it all back together, do one last tighten, and you're pretty much done with your drive unit. Now moving on to the driven unit. This is also spring-loaded. I'm using a snap ring removal tool, uh, and the cam could pop off if you do this, but this is so gummed up that you know that's not happening here. So just be aware of that. I'm using a hub puller or a... Um, it's a pulley puller, a hub puller to remove the cam. Sometimes you just got to do that. I rented it for 50 bucks from AutoZone, and I can return it for 50 bucks, so it's basically free. Cleaning, same thing on the two movable sheaves. Take a wire wheel to it with the rust on these two areas here. These are pretty much the only parts that are going to rub against each other. You want to clean those with a brass brush if there's no rust. Um, it's a little less invasive, takes off less steel. So I polished it all up again. One thing I didn't show you in the drive unit is I'm spraying carb cleaner or brake cleaner on the parts that are going to receive the dry molly lubrication. Um, paper plates again. With dry molly, uh, it goes on wet. Okay, So 
as you can see, it's got this wet, this wet, shiny hue to it. I'm going to show you in time lapse what it's going to look like when it's dry. It'll dry to a dull haze. It's very important that you don't handle these parts until it's completely dry. It takes about five or ten minutes, not a big deal. So for reassembly, the cam has three holes in it, one for speed, the middle one for everything. You need to put it on the middle one, and the third is for uh, uh, only off-road. So just, just keep in mind there's three different holes. Put it in the middle. You know, that's the best one. Some of them only have one, like this cam only has one hole for the end of the spring. Uh, put the key back in there. You may need to hold it in place. Uh, looking at, here at the cam, um, the spring is just sitting loosey-goosey. You need to do what's called pre-winding, which allows the spring to be under tension. I'm going to talk about that and show you in a minute what it looks like when it's pre-wound for both the, the uh, normal red spring and the reverse wound spring. Uh, sometimes you can use a vise or padded C-clamps to do this. I just use both hands, hold pressure on it to put the snap ring back on there. Um, and then I use my thumb, as you can see, to put it in the groove, and then the cam should slide right back up under tension if it's clean. So for the red spring, the end is in the hole, the other part is there. For the yellow or reverse wound spring, same thing. But if you look, look how they're oriented. They're opposite and wound correctly. So keep that in mind if you're using a yellow or red spring. So that's it. You know, you're finally done. You're you didn't waste another $300 buying a new torque converter just because yours was a little rusty and needed to be cleaned. So, you know, if you like this video, I spent a lot of time on it. So if you can do one thing for me, give it a thumbs up or comment. That will allow other people to benefit from this that need to have their torque converter cleaned. Thanks.